because I know something you don't know. Welcome back to Moto Photo Adventures, everyone. This is Chris, and this is Dana from Striker ADV. He's got an awesome blog. You guys should definitely check that out. And if you haven't seen some of our other videos, he's in a couple. We rode the scar with him on the first go round. And also, he helped us with our uh, gear and sprockets change. Did you uh, enjoy doing that? It was very interesting. I learned I learned quite a bit that time. You got to be the... Uh, we got a spam in the can and we'll catch you on the big bounce round, over. <laughs> Mystery science theater. <laughs> yeah, you got to make all the funny comments. But very cool, man. Well, we wanted to kind of get a good sense of what is going on with your bike because <laughs> we enjoyed riding with you yesterday. That was so much fun. What do you got here? Well, this is a 2020 Triumph Tiger Rally Pro. Uh, this is the new 900 model. It came out... I want to say 2020, so this is the first year that they did that. Um, the Rally Pro model is the higher end flagship, all the bells and whistles, and I absolutely love this bike. It's very capable on and off road, and as you guys saw yesterday, it's also very interesting to pick up sometimes. <laughs> and you tried and test rode a lot of bikes. What did you go through? So I went through Honda Africa Twin, Suzuki V-Strom 1050, Yamaha Tenere T7, the Yamaha Super Tenere 1200, BMW GS 1200, 850, 800, all of the BMWs, uh, and several KTMs, like the 790, 890, and the 1290. And you ended up settling on a British bike. Yes. Um, <laughs> so the reason why I did that was prior to this bike, I owned a 2014 Triumph Tiger 800. It was a base model bike. It wasn't the crazy XC off-road version. The year that I had that bike, I loved the reliability. I love the, the, the triple power. Mm -hmm. You know, that triple mm -hmm. engine, it kicks in. It has this interesting growl whine to it. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. And then it was just the fit and finish. I mean, you spend the money for a premium bike, you get a premium product. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's other junk bikes out there, but I felt like with a bike like this, it's hard to go wrong with it. Right. And you didn't want to be spending, you know, a fourth of your year with your bike in the shop. Correct. <laughs> um, I don't like orange Kool-Aid bikes. So that was also another thing. Uh, I test rode the KTMs quite a bit and the KTM 890 and the Triumph Tiger 900 are very similar but very different. And for me personally, I like the 900 a lot better. Hmm. Well, you've tricked it out as well. You've got quite a setup here. Tell us a little bit about your luggage. When I started outfitting this bike, one of the big things I wanted to do was I wanted to focus more on the off-road riding capability. Unlike most bigger adventure bikes that have you know metal panniers or the bigger Moscow Moto um, external panier setups, I went with a rackless setup. Mm -hmm. So this right here is the Wolfman I want to say it's called the E-Rack, which is basically it's a system where you can put these rolly bags on mm -hmm. um, to get you know extra storage. You can also change it around. It's very modular. Uh, but I went with the Wolfman system because Wolfman... And they all connect to this underneath plate that yes. sort of makes itself its own structure as opposed to having to have panniers to strap it to. Right. Uh, the beauty with the Wolfman system is there's only three straps on this. You know, there's a strap on each side and then there's a strap in the back. I get to a hotel or if I get to camp and I want to strip the bike down, uh -huh. three straps, I'm done. Very cool. The other interesting thing with this Wolfman setup is these bags are waterproof, 100%. Mm -hmm. I've ridden this bike through torrential downpours and I have yet to actually get my gear wet. Mm -hmm. So to mm -hmm. me, that's a big, that's a big factor. Absolutely. Also riding off road, I've dumped this in mud puddles and again, my gear has not been wet. So that's why I like this system. Also, I've had Wolfman gear for five, six years. Mm -hmm. uh, my tank bag is actually from two different bikes. Wow. And I received this in 2016. It's the Enduro model. Uh -huh. I haven't been able to kill it yet. It's survived a KLR. It survived my Tiger 800. It survived this bike and everything I throw it through. They make a quality product at a pretty solid price point. And so no plans as of yet to upgrade to the waterproof one. I've considered it, but this is working fine. Yeah, so there's no holes in it. There, it, it still works. Gotcha. 
And then you have some other Wolfman bags on the front, but they're attached to your bike protection. So what's, what, what's with the protection? The Tiger 900 Rally Pros come with factory OEM crash bars, and they're not bad. They're actually pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Based off of your guys' recommendations on some of your bikes using the Outback Mototech products, and a friend of mine who has the same products on his Tiger 900, I made the decision, you know, I need something that's strong, that's durable, that can take the abuse that I put this bike through. Mm -hmm. So I took your guys' recommendations. Um, crash bars and the skid plate are um, joined at sort of in the front of the bike. It's probably the strongest unit that we make for this bike. Nobody else has been able to. I reached out to Outback Mototech and I picked up um, the Outback crash bars and then I put the Outback luggage rack on the back. Mm -hmm. Um, now, unfortunately, due to, you know, supply chain issues, I haven't been able to put the skid plate on yet. That is in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but so far, I've been very impressed with their products. I've dropped this bike probably 15, 20 times in the last three months. And as you can tell, these bars work. Yeah. So I, I recommend these bars just like you guys did. They're amazing. Dana is an expert at dropping his bike. So if you ever want to learn how to do that, follow him. <laughs> yes. And the way I look at it too is like, you know, people buy these big money adventure bikes and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to drop it. I bought this bike knowing I was going to drop it. That's part of the riding off road. Sure. That's the part of the adventure of it for me. And I got to uh, take your bike around the block a couple of times and it was a heck of a bike. It felt very light, very nimble for the amount of power. I was uh, surprisingly impressed. And one of the things that's interesting with this bike is this is 30 pounds lighter than the previous generation 800. That's amazing. So, I mean, I think it comes in at like 470 pounds, mm -hmm. fully loaded. I think I've had it up to 510 when I rode the Mid-Atlantic BDR. And I'll be honest with you, rolling through rock gardens, rolling through uneven terrain, you know, the sand that we rode through yesterday. That was brutal. I mean, it took everything I threw at it and then some. And I'll bet you appreciated having 30 pounds less to pick up. Oh, yes. <laughs> so what do they do? They just bore that 30 pounds out of the uh, cylinder when they uh, increase the displacement? <laughs> well, because it's a British bike, I think they just decided to, to switch to decaf tea. Oh. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, you know, the, the Triumph kind of has some interesting things going on with their, their current products where they are getting lighter. So... Mm -hmm. It's British engineering at its finest. Since we're talking about British, uh, the whole bike configuration. Now, one thing that you've told me before, and I think was really impressive, is how uh, cross-platform compatible Tiger parts are. So Triumph, I want to say it was four or five years ago, they decided that let's make everything the same. And what I mean by that is everything uses the same brake pads, the same oil filters, and I believe the same spark plugs. Mm. Uh, and the advantage of that is during COVID when we had the the supply chain shortages. Uh, I had friends with KTMs and BMWs who could not get oil filters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I go to my Triumph dealer and say, hey, I need an oil filter for my service. Hey, it's the same oil filter as the Bonneville, as the Scramblers. I believe it's the same one as the Thruxtons. Mm -hmm. So these bikes all share the same. So your dealership is definitely gonna have right. that in stock. Right, and then the other thing is the, the, the brakes. You know, the newer Triumphs have Brembo Stilema brake calipers. So it's again the same thing. You go in there, hey, I need a pair of brakes. So they They're have there. the they have the pads for you. Well, let's uh, roll up here to the cockpit a little bit. Tell me a little bit about these. This is the third bike these have been on. <laughs> uh, I found double take mirrors many years ago when I had a Kawasaki KLR. Uh -huh. I pro I bought them primarily because I needed a mirror that would fold down when I was riding through two track trails in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Um, previously I'd broken mirrors numerous times. Yeah. So these guys have been on my KLR, my Tiger 800, and now they're on here. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing with these mirrors is they have survived a very, I'm not going to say a traumatic accident, but this bike was rear-ended and it held up very well. The mirror's completely fine. Wow. And they have a lifetime guarantee anyway. Yes. So yep. take them with you because if you ever, something does happen, you can get them replaced for free. What else do we have up here? When I first got my 800, one of the things I learned was the Triumph, the factory OEM hand guards are completely useless. <laughs> there is no structural support. They are plain plastic. Just for wind, wind resistance, basically. If that. Uh, so I broke many brake uh, and clutch levers. Mm -hmm. So when I got the 900, I decided I need to go with bark busters, um, especially with because I ride a lot more off pavement and off road. Mm -hmm. So I went with the bark busters. I want to say these are the XPS covers. They're the narrower, the more aggressive right. off road style. 
and they keep the air off your hands, but they're functional mm -hmm. and they're still protective. Um, I, I mean, I've dropped this bike numerous times. Bark Busters have, have kept trouble. my kept my levers in one piece. That's pretty cool. I have uh, Bark Busters and I love them. If, you, if you've seen the uh, uh, Sunbird Circuit where we're riding through trying to find a free place to camp. <laughs> oh my gosh, it goes a long way. Yeah, we should have should have brought the beer with us. But we're like dodging through <laughs> sticks everywhere. <laughs> Those things really keep your hands from getting uh, beat up. You've also got some uh, ram mount stuff going on here. What's up with this? Uh, so I, from another bike, again, um, I have a Garmin Zumo 398 LMT. Mm -hmm. uh, this unit I've had on three different bikes again, <laughs> um, and I just carry it over. Sure. This unit I've had probably for four years, and it has not failed me yet. I used it cross country, mm -hmm. riding from Minnesota to South Carolina when I first moved to South Carolina. Uh-huh. Uh, and then I use it every day for commuting, as well as when I ride the Mid-Atlantic BDR, the South Carolina Adventure Route, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah, and it's mounted with a Ram Ball, or the Ram Mount products, I think are fantastic for bike accessories. As you know, your double take mirrors use Ram Balls, and you just got a GoPro Hero 10, and are going to be able to mount it all over your bike using Ram products. That's yes. pretty cool. Uh, and based off your guys' recommendation, I went with the GoPro Hero 10, and I've decided to get some Ram products I'm going to put on the crash bar, as well as I'm going to kind of play around and take the mirror off, mount uh -huh. it there. So yeah. it's going to be my learning experience for the summer. That's cool. One more accessory, very, very important, where you put your phone. So I use a quad lock, mm -hmm. and I'm still unsure about this. Mm. Uh, previous bikes, I've used the Ram X Cradle. Uh -huh. It worked, but it didn't work the way I wanted it to. Uh, I had an iPhone 7, mm -hmm. and I killed the camera on it. Oh, I've heard of that before, sure. So at the time, no one really made a vibration mount. No one knew the science of the harmonics that was breaking the cameras. I went with the quad lock, and again, I was still skeptical. Uh -huh. Now, I... I know Jason had a quad lock for the longest time. He started having issues with his, but he didn't have the vibration, anti-vibration yeah. set up. Now he has the vibration uh, dampener in there. So I went with the vibration dampener and I've used this for about two to three months, primarily on pavement. Mm -hmm. My biggest fear is if I get off road into rocky, you know, harsh terrain, it's very easy to pop off. Mm. Now, I don't know if it's gonna happen or not, but I don't wanna <laughs> lose a $400 phone in the backwoods of South Carolina. Sure, sure. So I use it on pavement, but uh -huh. off-road, I haven't really, I'm Tested still skeptical. That. Well, Jason takes his off-road all the time and hasn't had a problem. It, it, it is a really easy, quick on and off, which is, that's an, an advantage. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll test it out. Maybe we'll come back to you and see <laughs> what your final take is on the on the. Uh, or if I have to have a new phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool, man. Well, I appreciate it. Anything else you can think of? One last thing I want to point out is when the Triumph Tiger Rally Pros came out, they came in three colors. They mm -hmm. came in a khaki green, a black, and a white. To me, it's one of the most bland colors for the flagship model of the Triumph Tiger 900. I reached out to a company that I've kind of known for a little while. They make some beautiful graphics kits. Um, they're called Upshift Online. They're uh -huh. out of Idaho. They have a great publication that's all online, but they make these very nice graphics kits. At the time, they made a graphics kit for white and black tigers. That's this black, red, and white color scheme. Uh -huh. It was a prototype at first. They didn't know if they were going to make it or not. So I told them, I was like, look, I have a white tiger. If you make it, let me know. I will gladly get it. And as far as I know, I think I was one of the first ones to get this color scheme. Nice. And I'll be honest with you, on every tiger forum, every triant forum, I've only seen two wow. in existence. Huh. It brings unique character to this bike. And it's also a very durable 3M. It's a very mm -hmm. thick product. Like when I've taken this bike on two track trails or off road, I mean, I've smacked it with branches, rocks. And I mean, <laughs> it has held up extremely well. I mean, there's a couple nicks, but it's protected the actual paint of the bike. So if I ever decide to sell it, I could strip this off, clean it up, and it's still the original immaculate white finish. Upshift, very cool, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Dana. We appreciate you being on the channel. If you guys haven't already, check out uh, strikeradv.com. His blog is fantastic. I particularly enjoyed the article you had about the uh, three best value adventure bikes you can get into. It was really cool, interesting read. You guys should go check that out. 
And uh, yeah, please uh, hit the like and subscribe button and stick around for a lot more episodes coming soon. We appreciate it. Until next time. Holy crap. These bugs are killing me.